pagination in ASP.NET Core applications is incredibly important and powerful. So in this short video, you will learn how to implement a pagination system into a ASP.NET Web API. You can see that right here, we can specify a page, let's say three, and we wanna have let's say 15 elements on that page, I can simply hit execute and I will get the third page of my collection with all its elements. Let's get started. So let's take a look at the project that I got right here. It's a simple ASP.NET 7 web API and I have a single controller here which is called products controller and as a data model I have products right over here. So product class with ID, name and price. Now inside of the products controller you can see that it's an API controller and we have a specified route right here. And then we just create some mock product. So we are not making use of a real database because it's not important for this video. So here I got a list of products and just when we submit the request and we create the scope of the products controller in the background inside of the constructor of that controller, we simply create 100 mock products. You can see that right here, just I, from that for loop, product i, and then any price calculated by i again. So as I said, it's not really important what we show, it's more about the concept of pagination itself. So here we got our get endpoint, which is an HTTP get request for sure. And we are returning an i enumerable, which could be like an array or a list or any other collection of type product. And it's simply taking all of our products. You can see that here, products table, right? So in a real application, that would be like your entity framework table, for example, right? From your SQL database. We simply take that entire table, all the products inside of it and return it as a list. So when we start our application, we have open API and Swagger enabled. This is why we immediately can see our Swagger API test environment here. And when I now open that up, click on try it out and then hit execute, you can see that I will get a lot of products, right? So here I got 100. Now, 100 could be fine, but what happens if we have 1000 or 100,000, which is not really uncommon. So in that way, we would need to have some pagination. Maybe you only wanna show 10 products. Maybe you wanna show five. 25, 50, whatever, right? Let's get started implementing our pagination system. If you're looking for a powerful and easy to use UI framework for your Blazor applications, go ahead and check out Blazorize. They're using frameworks like Bootstrap, Bulma, Material and Antdesign, and they recently added one of the most popular CSS frameworks, which is called Tailwind CSS. I'm pretty sure you already have heard about it. Well, another cool feature is their fully customized validation system to help verify your data. By using Blazorize UI components, you'll be able to create stunning and functional interfaces in no time. You can find the link in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. Now, in order to add pagination to our endpoint right here, so that we can say, all right, get the items of page three and page five and all of that, we have to think about the logic first. So first of all, let's extend our request or our method right here by a parameter which we call page. And the initial page for sure is one. So we can set a default value for the parameter. We will set it to one. Now, next up, we have a page size. Let's set it to 10. Now the page size basically means that how many elements do we want to show on that page? So if we wanna have 10 elements on a page, we will set the page size to 10. If we wanna have 500 elements on a single page, we will set it to 500. So just as an example. Alrighty. Now let me remove that var products here because we should rename it. Let's call it var products per page. Now I will now set it to zero and return that var products per page. There we go. First of all, we should know how many total products we have. So let's say var total count equals to products or products table dot count. So we again access our table with all the products and simply take the count of it. Now, since we're using a mock data for loop here, we know that we have 100 elements. So next up, we should know how many total pages we then have. So if we have a page size of 10 and we have 100 products, we will have 10 total pages, right? On each page, 10 products, 10 times 10 is 100. So we can calculate that by saying, var total pages equals to, now first up, let's get started pretty simple. We take the total count 
and divide it by the page size, right? Now, in order to make it working, we want to have an integer. So what we do is we simply take that result from that division and now we round it up to the nearest whole number by using math.ceiling. Now let's take a look. He's complaining right now. He's providing, uh, he wants to see a decimal. So this is why we have to make a cast right here. We will cast into a decimal. Now we don't want to have a decimal finally. We want to have an integer. So this is why we have to convert or cast into an integer, right? So now we know that we have total pages. Let's say we have 10 or five, right? We don't want to have any floating point value. We want to know we have three pages, five pages and all of that. So here we have the correct calculation for that. Now, finally, we can now calculate all the products or we can grab all the products that we want to have. So we take our products table and then say dot skip so that we can skip over some elements. Now we want to skip our page first of all. So let's say page minus one. I will explain that just in a second. We have our page minus one. Let's just put that in parentheses. Let's multiply it with our total page size that we have right here. And now afterwards, let's call take so that we can take the amount of elements or products in that case that we want to have, which is defined by our page size. You can see that here, page size. And then finally, let's return it as a list. But first of all, let me just put that into separate lines of code or three. There we go. This is something that we see pretty often in real world applications. So first of all, we skip over the previous pages of data by multiplying the current page number by the page size and subtracting one right here. Now afterwards, we call the take method to get only the number of products we want to show on that page. Awesome. So in that way, we can now start our application, open up our endpoint, click on try out again. Let's say our page is three and we want to have 20 products in total. Let's hit execute and you should be able to see that we have our products starting from 41 up to, let's see where we end, let's see at 60, right? So this is because for sure, if we have 20 elements on each page, the first page will have 20, the second page will have 20, well, up to 40, and the third page, which we are requesting, starts at 41, just as you can see right here. Awesome. So this is how you can implement pagination in an ASP.NET Core web API. If you want to become an awesome ASP.NET Core or general full stack developer, check out our C-Sharp Progress Academy, which is a self-paced online course that teaches you ASP.NET Core, Angular, unit testing and C-Sharp software design patterns in depth. Well, we offer a 14 day money back guarantee and I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a developer. So go ahead, check out the link in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. Awesome. And that's it for this video. If you want to see more, please go ahead and watch our introduction on Entity Framework, for example, or our video on understanding your queries by understanding I enumerable and I queryables. Those are really great videos. You will learn a lot, I'm pretty sure. Well, and if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, go ahead and subscribe right now. And I'll be happy to see you back in the next video. Have a good one.